Jamaica and all over the world, wherever you are from, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our celebration of Eternal Father. It is Emancipation Day, right? Emancipation Day. And I really want to wish all those of you who are celebrating Emancipation Day, because guess what? I'm in Canada and we're also celebrating Emancipation Day today. So August 1, that's Emancipation Day here. But Jamaicans, I want, and all over the world, welcome and happy Emancipation Day. God is indeed our eternal father. And I'm telling you, our anthem, the Jamaican anthem, it is probably one of the only anthems that I know that is a purr. And that anthem was penned by um, Honorable Hugh Sherlock, right? And he was a minister, right? He was a minister. He penned the words of our national anthem. So we just want to thank God that our anthem is a prayer unto God saying, Eternal Father, bless our land. And we want to celebrate today. We want to just exalt the king of kings and the lord of lords and just give him some radical praise in the place all right i want you to join me this evening join us here eternal church of jesus christ the record we want to welcome you all on behalf of all the affiliates uh passion and purity on marriage is honorable christian teachers in action we want to welcome you to our emancipation day celebration and we pray that you will be blessed as we get into our program. Let us just begin by just giving God some honor this evening. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, that you are indeed our eternal Father. And Father God, I pray that today, today, God Almighty, we will experience you in a special way. We pray for every person who is logging on, whatever media they are using, that you, God Almighty, you will be the source today. We pray, God Almighty, that every person who logs on will experience you and understand what it means to hail you as eternal father. So we place all of today in your hands and we tell you thanks in Jesus name. Amen. We're giving God all the praise. He is indeed, indeed our eternal father. 
right? And um, Emancipation Day is pretty special because it celebrates our freedom, right? Now, I think in 1834, that is when the official proclamation was made um, that all children under six would be free, but it was only four years later, that would be 1838, that it was actually um, written in stone that yes, we are gonna be um, emancipated. Now, the, the actual holiday, Emancipation Day, um, it, uh, it only became a public holiday in Jamaica. Well, it was reinstated as a public holiday, I think, in 1998, um, led by the Honorable, I think, P.J. Patterson. He led that charge, um, along with um, Professor Rex Nettleford, I think, um, led the charge for it to be reinstated as a public holiday. Hence, we are celebrating today um, Emancipation Day. So there's a lot in our history. We have a rich history. And we want to celebrate our history because guess what? There is so much that we can learn from it. And we understand that God is indeed the one who has kept us. He has kept us. And we continue to celebrate him. We continue to be excited. We are excited about all that he is doing. Father, we just bless your name, God. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify your name. My God, you are the very reason why we are here on earth, and you are the reason, Almighty God, why we are in this meeting, Mighty God, this celebratory meeting, this meeting where, God, we have come to meet with you, our Father. Hallelujah. And God, as you express yourself as Father, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we are just thanking you for those, Mighty God, who will truly know you for the first time and understand the love, the eternal, the everlasting, the love that you have for them, God, and that that love is able to break off yokes. That love is able, Lord God, to change the root of a generation. That love is able, Lord God, to redirect a, a youth. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, every person online, every person in the homes of those online, every person, mighty God, who's connected one way or another, oh God, we lift them up before you and we invite you to have your way, God. Hey, Amanda Rabasa, move as you will, Holy Ghost. Father, you have called this meeting, hallelujah, Jesus, for a reason. And God, we stand ready to be amazed by your power and by your anointing. And we thank you that somebody, hallelujah, will leave this meeting, hallelujah, finding, oh God, that their true identity is in you. Somebody will leave this meeting with a new understanding of emancipation. And so, God, we just give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We surrender every item before you, Lord. We surrender the speakers before you. We surrender the internet connection, the devices. Lord, have your way as we glorify you, as we magnify you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. That was uh, Sister Keisha. Uh, thank you so much for that prayer. And so we are going to be setting the, the perspective of what uh, today is all about. And we are going to be inviting the founders of all these um, wonderful movements, um, Pastors Donnett and Andrew Norman, they are going to be coming mm -hmm. and they're going to be just kind of putting the evening in perspective for you. So you kind of know, you know what we're all about today. They're going to be setting the stage for what we're all about. So over to you, Pastors Donnett and Andrew. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Jackie. Really appreciate your, uh, your courtesies. And really appreciate all of you who are online. Welcome, yes, to Emancipation Day, to the Eternal Father experience. And having an experience with the Eternal Father is what totally transforms our life. Yes, you cannot encounter God and remain the same, this Eternal Father. And so what we're talking about, we're talking about the greatest emancipation ever, not just physical emancipation. And that's what uh, those uh, preachers did even during slavery. They went and they preached to the slaves, the enslaved Africans and other ethnic groups and to the slave masters. They preached the gospel to them. Sometimes they were not so welcome, but um, they understood that, okay, until the physical slavery part is dealt with and freedom is, is enacted, we are going to bring spiritual deliverance Amen. through Jesus Christ, through the gospel of Jesus Christ to both slave master and slaves. And we saw a lot of that happening. Some uh, of those preachers lost their life, of course. 
So the greatest emancipator is Jesus Christ. Yes, Amen. he has come to bring a uh, spiritual emancipation. Um, but of course, we know that when Jesus Christ is really operating, he's going to affect every area of your life, Amen. physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, uh, social, and every other <laughs> part of dimension of your experience. Yes, because Jesus is so very practical and so very real. Yes, God is eternal father of all creations. Yes, of all creatures, visible and invisible. Amen. Yes, and he actually did it with the word, Jesus Christ. Yes, and um, from the standpoint that he is the designer and the source of all things, he is eternal father. But guess what? What we're here um, to emphasize this evening is that he started another uh, kind of relationship in the earth called relationship called family. Yes, Jesus Christ was his first son, mm -hmm. firstborn son, yes. Mm -hmm. And after Jesus, many more sons are being born on the planet. So this is pretty much what we're talking about. And um, some of you this evening, you have already been, have, have experienced the born again experience. You have already experienced what it is to be um, a, a son of God. Yes, through the new birth. And um, we are saying to you, let's grow up into Jesus Christ. Let's mature so that we can effectively impact our nations for the glory of God. The way how God blesses a nation uh, um, <laughs> is indeed uh, through multiplying saints in the nation. Man, I got so excited. I just ran into it. I didn't even mention my beautiful wife sitting beside me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Minister Donnet Norman, really appreciate her with all my heart. Yes. And um, God is a God of victories, a God of deliverance. And uh, so we are trying to just give a little perspective of what's happening. And we are saying that, listen, all the hospitals, the, some of the greatest universities ever were started by mature Christians who understand that they wanted to make an impact for God. So real emancipation starts spiritually. Come on, somebody. That's where real emancipation starts. Where And that's the greatest emancipation, whether spiritually or naturally, anywhere in the history of the human race, where a human soul is delivered from the kingdom of darkness. That There's a real kingdom of darkness out there that has enslaved the human race. Yes, before slavery, uh, the whole human race was enslaved. And we know that Jesus, the liberator, has come. And be, beginning with him, God said, I like this. I like my first son, really, really well pleased with him, and I want many more sons. So that's what we're about this evening. We want to see you deliver. We want to see you know God as Father. All of the virtues and the sacrifice, sacrificial spirit that you've seen a real Father, guess who it began in? In God. Yes, Amen. it began in God. Yes, all those virtues. You know, virtues are not only related to the females. Come on, somebody. Yes. Uh, virtues are actually anchored and, and, and founded and sourced in God. Amen. And so um, we want to, we are glad that you're with us this evening. And we know that when we begin to deal with fatherhood, a lot of things come up, but we are also believing that the love of God, the love of the father is powerful enough to heal anything that surfaces as you consider these issues. Amen. And so let us believe God this evening that the same relationship that he has with his first son he wants to establish that with you and me Amen. and cause us to know his love Amen. and his grace. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I just want to say hi and welcome to the Eternal Father experience. For 4,000 years, no one dared call God Father mm. until Jesus Christ was sent and he was being stoned and, and he was being crucified for calling God Father. But he mm. had to pay the price yes. that through him we could have eternal father, mm. not just the father of a natural creation, but the father of the new creation in Christ. We wanted mm. to sit back. We wanted to relax. We wanted to plan to spend the evening with us. We do what is called word vibes. Word vibes are, you know, writings that we do weekly to, dis to disciple and up um, uplift all young people. On our young at heart, you can find them on Facebook, Word Vibes, Bread for the Nations. And so we have some young persons and some young at heart this evening who have used that information that they have been discipling and they're walking in to write creative pieces for you. We have a wonderful time and we know that God is going to have himself a wonderful time with us. So thank you for coming. 
And please stay with us. We are going to go into uh, a, a dance ministry, which is a prayer. And we are going to be inviting uh, Faith Manning, who is uh, um, representing the radical gospel performing arts right here in Canada, a ministry that is right here in Canada, the radical gospel performing arts. And she is going to be ministering the Lord's Prayer um, through a dance. So just be blessed.
shining like the sun. It's your kingdom that reigns forever. We'll proclaim. And thank you so much, Faith, for that beautiful ministry in dance forever. We will proclaim that he is the king of kings and lord of lords. God is just amazing, isn't he? And so we just find every expression. And I want to encourage you, if you're joining us, whatever expression you have, whatever gift God has given you, use it for his glory. Maybe you can can dance, but you can you can do poetry, you can sing, you can write, whatever you can do, use it to give him glory because he has given you gifts that are expressions of him. Amen. And we want to just continue to just give him all that there is. And now we're going to invite um Curleen Brown. She is going to kind of put the national anthem in perspective. And uh, after that, we're going to have another prayer by uh, Avon Coke. So we're going to have Curleen come now to put the anthem in perspective. Eternal Father, bless our land. Guard us with thy mighty hand. Keep us free from evil powers. Be our light through countless hours. The national anthem can be seen as a prayer to our eternal Father. Our Heavenly Father hears us when we pray from a sincere heart. A true Father responds to the cries of His children. Over the years, we have been spared from many disasters. This is partly because of the prayers which have been prayed sincerely, including that of our national anthem. God has heard our cries and has protected us because of his purpose for us as a nation. And should we encounter any challenge that may be insurmountable, he will be there to help us overcome. The second verse of the anthem is a reminder that we should have love and respect for all. We must fulfill our duties to those in authority with dignity and according to God's will. Our Heavenly Father, no more than ever, wants to give as many of us who believe him the power to become his sons and daughters by his Son, Jesus Christ. May we open our hearts to fulfill his good, perfect, and acceptable will for our lives. Once again, I find myself standing in grief and shame for this testament to our wickedness before God and all mankind. How long, Lord, how long until your judgment against the wickedness of a people who murder their children and sing their anthem to you as Father? Will you not make our wickedness appear as a terror it is before us? Will you not reveal to us the ravage of our generations at our own hands? You, eternal Father, not turn our heart toward you for the honor of your holy name. Today we plead from this place of shame, this monument to the children we murder, that you turn your heart toward us as you turn our hearts toward you so that we will be spared the written judgment to be my God, that which you've designed for us, so that Jamaica may under God increase in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity, and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. So help us, eternal Father. <laughs> Thank you. 